Did you know it was 90 years ago this very week that the BBC began broadcasting its very first scheduled TV service from Alexandra Palace in North London. So I've come here to the National Media Museum in Bradford for a look at a bit of TV history. If you tuned in that very first week, you'd have been enjoying programmes like the variety show Starlight, starring top comedian Leonard Henry. No, not that one. Or London Character, starring W.J. Smith, the whistling guard. <whistles> or that perennial favourite, In Signs, Through the Ages. Riveting stuff. And you'd have been in a pretty select bunch. Only about 500 households had the technology to receive those early broadcasts and you'd have needed one of these behemoths in your living room. This would have set you back around 63 guineas, which equates to 11,000 pounds in today's money. And you had to live within about 25 miles of the Ali Pali transmitter. You know, it's amazing it ever caught on. My name's Ian Baird, and I'm an associate curator at the National Media Museum. Well, a lot of the televisions uh, uh, that were first available in 1936 uh, had such a long picture tube that they orientated it vertically and you would watch on a 45 degree mirror. So you're actually watching the mirror on the top of the television rather than the screen itself. And you would be dressed up quite often because it was like a night at the theatre. They didn't think of television as staying in. So they would actually show in a lot of the advertising and publicity material people in full evening suits watching a, a television program. And they thought of it as uh, quite an occasion, and it really wasn't like it is today where it's affordable to everyone. It was quite exclusive because the television set was very expensive. But quickly, television technology improved and the prices fell. By 1953, over two million households had a TV licence. ITV arrived in 1955, followed by BBC Two in 1964 and the launch of Channel Four in 1982. And in those days of just three or four channels, the whole family would crowd around a single set and enjoy the same programme together. Popular shows could regularly command audiences of over 20 million. But that all began to change with the arrival of this, the video cassette. For the first time, people could tape a show and watch it when they wanted. Viewers could choose when to view and what to watch. And in the early 90s, viewer choice exploded with the arrival of the Sky Network. Initially, it offered four more channels that soon multiplied to over 200. At the start of this century, TV entered another new phase of growth. As the World Wide Web grew up and computers became more powerful, it became possible to broadcast high-definition sound and pictures on the internet. And in 2005, the phenomenally successful YouTube was launched, enabling anyone to broadcast themselves. Jump to the present and the new entertainment package from Now TV provides instant and easy access to a range of entertainment channels, hundreds of movies on demand and pay-as-you-go access to live sports on multiple devices, all taking advantage of the rapid growth in broadband connectivity. So from this to this, TV's certainly come a long, long way. Now, why don't I put that remote control? 